Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Josh. I make DIY and room makeover videos. Super excited for today's video. So I guess this will be part one in maybe a two part series of my bathroom makeover. Today I'm gonna to be showing you sort of my redesign for the bathroom vanity. My vanity is a little bit on the bigger side, so I figured starting with this could really set the tone for the space. So that's where I'm starting. I really wanted to specifically highlight this one technique where you can spray paint your fixtures and your faucets. This really saved me so much money because quickly changing fixtures, especially in a bathroom where you have a shower, a bath, and a faucet, it can really add up and can be pretty pricey. This was a really cheap way to change things up. I actually put a link in the description box if you want to jump straight to the spray paint because that's what you're here for, you can do that. Um, otherwise, if you want to see the full makeover, just stick around. So part one for me was to cover up the cabinet portion of the vanity with some contact paper. Here's what you'll need. So the first thing you want to do is to make sure you have a clean and dry surface to work with. I was lucky because this contact paper spanned the width of my vanity. So instead of going crazy with measuring, I just took the adhesive strip off the top and lied that part down first. I then started to take the adhesive off in the back so I can little by little work my way down. This was a little bit difficult for me specifically because my vanity does have this ridged portion that you can kind of see showing through, but you can take a credit card or anything that's rigid and flat to little by little press down the contact paper as you go. You wanna make sure you keep that adhesive backing covering the rest that has not yet made contact with your surface. As you can see, you are going to have to kind of be repetitive with this lay a section down, maybe an inch or two, flatten it, and if it just isn't sitting right, just pick it right back up and try lying it flat again. You really wanna to try to get all of those creases out. If there are small air bubbles, don't worry about those. We can take care of them in a little bit. When I was happy with it, I just went along the edges with my X-Acto knife very slowly and very carefully to cut off the extra pieces. My tip for this is just laying the X-Acto knife firmly against the edge of your surface so that you know you make a perfect straight cut. If you did run into issues where you did have some air bubbles, you can just take a pin, pop the little bubble, and flatten it right down. So then you're just gonna go around and repeat the steps for all of your exposed sides. I was actually lucky that my vanity front lied very much flat with the doors. So for the front piece, this is a tip if you're in my situation, I just laid the whole thing down so that I wouldn't have to individually cut out the doors. And then I went in with my X-Acto knife along the creases to cut the doors out. And then I poked my little holes and put the hardware back in. And of course at the end, I had to clean up all of the edges for the top, the bottom, the sides, and the doors. This project was a lot quicker than I thought. It only really took me about an hour, maybe even less than that. So this is definitely beginner friendly. And for those of you out there who are renting, it is absolutely renter friendly. Next up, I was gonna change up the faucets with spray paint. Here's a list of everything you'll need. Don't forget, links are down below in the description box. Before starting a project like this, just make sure that all of your surfaces are super, super dry. Don't use them for at least 24 hours before starting. But when you're ready, you're going to start first with your coarse grit sandpaper. I used 80 grit, and you're gonna go in and sand every single surface over and over and over again. Pretty much do this until your arms and hands are hurting you. You really wanna make sure you get all of that coating off. Then you can go in with your fine grit sandpaper. I used 220 just to clean up everything. Make sure to get every surface that you plan to spray paint. Once you're done, you can clean up all the extra sandpaper. So now for the most tedious, but maybe most important part of this DIY, you're going to be taping around all of your fixtures. So the likelihood is you have a rounded surface to tape around. So you want to go in and put tiny pieces of tape, putting the straight manufactured edge against your fixture. You do not want to take your tape and try to bend it in a circle around. You just need to put small pieces, make sure the edge is touching right up to the fixture over and over and over until you get a circle that looks sort of like this. 
you're going to do that to all of your fixtures and then you're going to create a sort of box around these. So this is just to ensure that the surface nearby is not going to be covered or touched by any spray paint. Remember to get all of your surfaces that you're spray painting, including the drains if that's something you're doing. All of these same steps would apply if you are doing your bath or shower fixtures. So it's almost time to start spray painting, so make sure you have any protective gear you'll need. So to protect the rest of the bathroom, we're going to be putting up this plastic tarp to cover pretty much anything that could get in the line of fire of the spray paint. For anyone out there who has watched the show Dexter, you might be getting flashbacks at this point. For this, you really want to tape on the wall above your fixtures, and then you are going to very delicately create a small hole for your first piece to go through. You can then, little by little, extend that hole out to the rest of the fixtures, sort of just to make a window into that little tape box you made. For those of you with fixtures that are a one piece, you can just start with a faucet with a small hole and make the hole bigger and bigger as you go down. Once your hole is of the right size, just wide enough to expose that tape rectangle we made, just tape up the edges of the hole you made. So once you finish, your bathroom should look something like this. Then you're ready to prime. This is the automobile primer I used, obviously linked down below. So for this, I just followed the instructions on the can. I tried to stay like eight or 10 inches away, getting into all those little crevices. I ended up doing two coats, giving one hour dry time in between. And here's what it looks like. The manufacturer's instruction says this takes a full 40 hours to completely dry. So if you do have that time, definitely wait that long. But I only have one bathroom, so I waited maybe two to three hours till it was dry to the touch before going in with my gold spray paint. And for this, same exact steps. And again, two coats. Now that I had my primary color laid down, I gave this a full 24 hours to cure. For our last step, we're just going to go over this with a high gloss lacquer, which really is going to be the thing providing the protection. So this I did the following morning, and after applying this coat, I waited a full 24 hours before using my sink. After you patiently wait, you can take everything down when things are fully dried, and here's what you'll be left with. Now that the big parts are out of the way, time for some small details. Here's everything I used to install new poles. So in a previous video, I was having some trouble installing poles that had two holes on them. And I asked you guys for some advice and everyone told me to make a cardboard template. So to my understanding, after doing some research, that's when you sort of make a grid of your cabinet and you measure out your holes so that you can fold it up to any cabinet and you'll have the exact spot the holes you to go. For my cabinet, sadly, the doors were a little bit uneven and they each already had that starter hole. So instead what I did was I took some inspiration from the cardboard template idea and I actually drew out a template of the handle I was installing. I drew out the shape and I made sure to measure to find the center and to draw out perfectly where each of the holes were. I then pre-drilled my holes in my template. I could hold that up to my cabinet, putting in a screw to hold down the top part, make sure it's straight, and then I can drill my bottom hole once I ensure that my little grid is standing up straight. I did this individually for each of the doors since, like I said, my doors were slightly uneven. This was a little bit of a headache and I still don't fully understand the cardboard template hack, but I think one day I'll get it and thankfully this worked out for me. This is only part one of the makeover, but after all those steps, I just wanted to add a couple touches to finish this design. Here's a look back at how we started and what we did. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. Um, this one was really fun for me. I can't wait to see how the rest of the space comes together. If you have ideas for the space or maybe comments on things you liked or didn't like, 
definitely leave them down below. If you did enjoy the video, please drop me a like and you can subscribe for more content like this. See you guys next time.